Hello everyone, thanks for attending to my workshop here at Rebo and Meta Facebook. Uh, this is the first workshop from a series of three for the holidays, so I hope you have fun today. Uh, today we're having, uh, today we're creating an effect with the theme of sweets and candies using 3D objects. Uh, we will uh, adjust the scene, create this, create the entire effect from scratch, and then we will add some special effects in the end if you feel comfortable with. So I hope you have fun. Now that we are starting, I already dragged my assets into the scene. So here they are with the materials and everything already set up. I believe the, the files from the contest will come with the configured materials, so I already did that on my end. Uh, so for this, I'm using the cake, the gingerbread man, the heart, the cookies, the candy, the lollipop. Uh, I believe you're free to use uh, which assets you have and also combine them to make unique combinations and different effects. You can see here that the candies are static to the to the scene, so they're not uh, they're not being interactive with what with what I do. So let's add some interaction to it. First of all, I'll add a, a face tracker with a face mesh. So now I have a face mesh that keeps track it to my face, as you can see. I'll add a material uh, just to hide this face. It will be a retouch material. So now my face uh, has smooth skin and also my skin. Notice if you add a color load, you will lose that uh, full screen uh, smoothing. So keep that in mind uh, while you're pl planning your effects. Okay, I'll move this up so it's behind my object and not in front of it. So when I add another face mesh, it will be able to, to go behind. Uh, this is happening because the rendering options of the materials are turned on. Uh, for 3D objects, it's good to, to keep them on because they can cause some problems and rendering problems. But I'm not be using another face mesh. I just create this one to demonstrate what happens. Uh, we'll use the uh, face tracker to add some interactions to our objects in the patch editor. In the patch editor, uh, if you don't have it, you can go on view and show pat patch ed editor. Uh, that will make it pop uh, below. Uh, you can also show the console with important messages and the asset summary. In the asset summary, you have to keep in mind that Facebook, Instagram, and also on other devices, uh, need to, uh, another, de and another devices like Porto need to have the projects until four, uh, and megabytes. Uh, so now you can see that we have a lot more than that in the textures. So we might uh, need to uh, compress them. So they are an, in this range of four megabytes. Let me hide my sweet candies here so I can show how to compress these textures so you don't have this problem later. Uh, right here, you can click and organize uh, through bigger and smaller textures. So I want to see which is uh, occupying more space on my device. It seems like the uh, or or it seems that this texture is the biggest one. So I'll put in manual mode. And since there's no transparency in it, I can use the J JPEG option. Look, what a difference. You can also, uh, yeah, this is an HDRI that you, I will put up to download 
in a link somewhere. So here we can choose the textures that are the same kind and set up uh, a setting for all of them. Since I don't have any transparency, I'll put in uh, JPEG uh, since that uh, takes less space. I believe that will help uh, in getting uh, less space taken by those textures. You can take some time to compress the textures. It depends on the computer and the processor. But once you're done, uh, everything is good to go. Here's another one that I forgot. I'm done. I have one uh, dot three megabytes. Uh, that's okay. I try to aim for two megabytes for extra reach. So let me remove the emissive texture since we don't use that. Uh, here's another one. Opacity. I'm not using that too because I want my candies to be opaque. Here's another one, done. Yeah, I think that's okay. We can try to compress it later, but for now I think it's okay. Okay, now we're going to uh, take a look at the assets we have. Uh, this is a cake. We'll make an effect where the, the objects uh, float around our faces. So let's start by adding our face tracker to the patch editor. You can do that by dragging uh, the face tracker here and you can see that there's a face finder which helps uh, finding your face and there's a face select. Zero is for face one. If you insert one here, uh, it means the second face that is captured on the camera is manipulating this. So I'll keep this at zero. And here are the options for face tracker. From face tracker, you can get the face, the 3D position of the face, the scale of the face and the rotation of the face. Once you drag this, once you drag this node, you get the possible nodes that you can use with it. And here, if you, if you don't know what you're doing at this part, I recommend uh, reading this because it's very helpful. There's also a lot of documentation that helps uh, learning this. So it's faster to learn through there than trying to read here. Uh, for this, we're going to use the 3D position uh, and we are unpacking it. What is unpacking? Unpacking is separating the, the values so we can use it uh, in another way. So from here is a 3D position. In the 3D position, we have three axes, X, I, Y, and Z. And so I want to separate them, separate them. And since I, I want to, to make it move less uh, through the Z depth, that is the depth, I will div divide by two. Maybe I'll change my idea later, but that's how I'll use it. And now we can smooth here with exponential smoothing that make things move slower and softer and more beautiful. So here is the uh, node for the position that is the cake from the cake. Whoops, an error. Why is that error showing up? Because this is a vector tree x, y, and z. So for this to work, we have to connect the three numbers that come from here. So I'm, after unpacking, I'm going to smooth this one too, and this one too. Okay, now uh, to join those three numbers, I'm going to pack it again. 
and then I have another vector 3 like I had here so I can connect it again sorry so I can connect it again and now it's following smoothly uh, my face check if I divide here by 0 or by 1 so by 1 is not divided sorry by the 0 and for 5 for 5 it almost doesn't move so I'm going to keep by 1 here since I don't want to use it yet now let's uh, now that it's moving uh, in the way I want I'll add a new object I try to use the same name so I know what I'm using cake no and restart so it works again okay now I can move this to whatever I want so I want this to be on the top of my head let's uh, add this thing here and restart okay it's in the same axis everything is aligned everything is aligned so I can use it that way now I'll, I'll move it to where I want this cake to be maybe here and also I think I want this cake to be bigger it's so beautiful that I don't want it hiding down there look how cute it is here's the ambient light that you can add to adjust the intensity of the light to all your objects with physical or standard materials you can also test here changing from sRGB to linear so you can get better colors for your objects I don't like pure white light, so I'm going to bring it a little uh, more yellow here. And now it looks super cute. Okay. Now let's uh, do the same thing to the other objects. And the gingerbread man seems to be very washed out, so let me try to change the line here uh, much better. Okay. Now I can... Uh, Add the gingerbread man here but I want uh, all of them to not have the the same uh, smooth uh, mov movement I want them uh, some of them to be more smooth and others to be more responsive maybe uh, thinking about their weights to make it more realistic maybe so I'm going to smooth it again this time by 500 notice how it's not moving the same way the cake is much faster I'm going to add another uh, no object this time ginger bread no and why not create another new objects for this entire uh, collection of objects i feel no object makes uh, the life easier because it's more organized if i want to hide all of the objects for troubleshooting something then i just click here and everything is hidden Okay, so I'll adjust the scale. 
rotate a little bit, take advantage that this is 3D. Show it's 3D, it looks so much better. Okay, and now I can move my new objects to whatever I want. So cute, right? I love it. Okay, the heart is a beautiful object made by this parky art team, and I love it. Uh, the color seems to be red, so it's not very accurate. Uh, and linear looks so much better again. I think all the objects are going to look better on linear, so let's keep uh, testing. Uh, now I can uh, take advantage that I created two, and let me see, we have six objects. I'm going to create another variation. Exponential smoothing. This time, 900. And pack it again. You can also pack in different uh, connections. It doesn't have to be uh, in the same uh, X, Y, and Z, but it will produce uh, different reactions to the object. I prefer keeping uh, it responsive, at least in the axis I want, here and here, so users know what they are doing. So let's keep things like they should be. I forgot about the Z, I guess. Sorry. Okay. See, uh, the bigger the damping here and the exponential is moving, the smoother will be the movement for your object. So let's try to organize this uh, patch editor. You can comment around on some selecting uh, stuff, so it automatically automatically uh, makes things uh, slicker. Here is damping. 900. Let's take this divide off. I'm not using it. Here is damping 200. And here is damping 500. Now I can connect different objects to this one and it will be so much easier. Uh, another one. Another one. Now they are, they are in the same position. You can check how the, how the movement is different for them. It's not the same. The more damping, the smoother they are. I prefer a more smooth object, so I'll keep them here. Now let's create the new objects so they can move. Um, we can also use the add commands, but I prefer to keep things more visual. But let me show you, uh, for an example, the heart. You can add vector tree for the heart. And now you can add any value you want. Look, and now it's there. I prefer doing this uh, through the new object because I think it's more uh, visual. Let's make it bigger, reset it. And again, let's make it more look like it's more 3D. I 
Okay. Now here is the heart node. See how much easier it is through the new object? That's why I prefer it. You don't have to be guessing which value you used. Uh, let me check which value I used. Oh, no, I don't move through the new object. So let's do this again because it needs to be through the new object for what we are going to do later. Here and here. Yeah, this is the values we uh, will have to add in the patch editor if you want to have this exact same position. Let's uh, rename this also uh, 3D objects. No. Okay, here's the cake, the gingerbread. Let's do another one for the cookie. be bigger and also could be down here and also could be down here so beautiful let me check if it needs to be linear. Yeah, so much better. So much better. Another one for the cookies objects. Let's uh, position this one. Let me see how it looks. Uh, the cookies. Oh, it's that flower. I'm going to bring it down here. Oh, it's the same object as the other one. And so it's the same material. I'm going to scale it up a little bit. And also bring And also bring it up here. The cookies and the candies and everything are following me. Now the lollipop. And the other candy. I don't think I'm, I'm using them. Yeah, those ones look, like, look a lot more like Christmas for me. I'm keeping these ones. Okay, let me check if the cookie looks better in RGB. Nobody could use at least a little more of lights. Maybe some directional light in pink or blue or red. Yeah, in red, I like it in red. Uh, let me try to move the direction of light, maybe through here and here. Beautiful. Okay, now with the 3D rotation of the objects, we can also manipulate that uh, according to our faces. So here is the 3D rotation. And you can see the rotation is 0, 0, 0 for our objects. So uh, let's uh, let's sync the rotation of our face with our object. Uh, here's the 3D rotation. You can uh, unpack it too. And then um, and then use exponential exponential smoothing to 
make it look more smooth. For this, I'm going to use the same value for all the objects, so it doesn't look too random for everything. The cookies might not work correctly with that, so no, they're working. I'm going to multiply to make it look more obvious, like three. Yeah, very good. Here, the rotation of the heart, you can see that it already had some rotation. So I'm going to add vector three and I'm going to put it here so I keep the rotation that I added before and just add some more. Look how cool this is. I really love this effect so much, it's looking so cool. Now the other cookie also has some rotation. So let's try to keep things organized here. Okay, add vector tree and rotation. Let's copy the rotation already. Here is the other cooking. Maybe you can multiply by two to make it more soft. Yes. The gingerbread. Add again, vector three. And the cake. Now you can uh, correct the starting position by rotating it again here. I love it so much. It's looking so cool. Okay, now let's add some animations uh, to make it look more uh, advanced, <laughs> even being simple to do so. I'll make the object pop when the effect opens, so the effect looks more polished. So for this, I'm going to add a pose. And notice every time the effect starts, it will activate on turned off. See, it blinks. Let me zoom here again. This is because it activates every time the effect starts. Remember we made no objects before and all of them are in the same scale now. They're all one, one, one. Okay. So now we're going to use that. Uh, remember I told you also that every time you start the effect, the pulse turn off is going to pulse. So let's use that in, in this animation. Anim uh, every time the effect starts, the animation will play. See? Okay. Now the progress can be connected to a transition. Uh, our objects will start with a scale zero and go to the scale one, that is the 100%. And here are the animation curves. I'll add the credentic in out to make it more dynamic. So let's see what happens. See your cake. Uh, let's add a, a delay here. 
of one second. Okay. See your cake showing up? Yeah, that's because it has that animation. Cake, the gingerbreads. Okay, we have five objects. Let's add some more delay, two seconds maybe. No, it doesn't need one, one is okay. And uh, now here. You can notice the it's not uh, coming from the center of the object, this scale. That's because uh, the object is not aligned with the, with the axis. You can do that by moving your object to the center or uh, even better, making the scale from your object. But to do that, we'll need to create a transition with the values that your object already has. So let's do that by selecting the root object in your objects. Here we can transition to the scale it already has. And now you can see that the gingerbread will grow from its own axis. See, much more beautiful, right? Be careful when creating those animations. If they're not on the axis, like here, it will not work. So you can create another new object inside of this new object and just move it to the center of this new object. I think it's okay now. Let's see if it's going to work with the cookie. Not very well. It needs to be more here and then we can move it again. I kind of like this movement. Uh, it's not what I wanted, but it, it takes time to get used to it. So let's do the other ones uh, and then we can try this one again. Here this scale is uh, this one. So I'm going to copy it here and connect the object. Beautiful. When modeling your objects, remember to keep them in the axis. So that will make it much easier uh, for doing this kind of animations later.
this probably is not going to work also yeah it's because these objects were attached one to each other and i separated them but i like how they are right now Let's divide again the the rotation. Let's multiply by one. I don't want it to be rotating that much. Okay, now let's uh, add an animation with a screen tap. Screen tap. Here we're going to merge two poses. So it plays this animation when it starts and also play another animation when I want. So here we're going to add a knot and a switch. The switch will play here and the knot will reverse. It's working. Now let's change the duration to a half second. So it's faster. And also uh, the animation coin. I like elastic. But for this, I want it to be more smooth. So I'm going to add maybe, so, so no, so maybe quadrantic in and out. Yeah, much better. Now we can even add some delays, uh, like a half second to the cake. Uh, cookie. Done, they're not happening all at the same time. They look much more dynamic now. Uh, our effect is looking pretty cute right now. We can even add uh, some more effects like with handler passes. Are you ready for it? And uh, now we're going to uh, remove our or retouch material because it's not compatible with render passes. Uh, so I'm going to add some uh, render passes tag tags to my objects. 
Here is the cake. Here is the ginger. Here is the cookie one. Here is the heart. And here are the cookies too. Okay. Now I'm going to add a scene render pass. Uh, maybe with my heart. And add dot sub tree. So everything inside of it comes in my scene. The background will be transparent. So I'll reduce opacity to zero. And here we have our heart in transparent background. Now we can add some extra effects to it. So I'm going to check some patches from the library. Maybe facing color mix from Pablo. And maybe blur. And also adjust colors. Okay. I'm going to blur here. Another shader render pass to see how it looks like. It's not too blurred, so I'm going to blur it again. And maybe reduce the size here. Now we need to connect it to our device. Let's create a default pipeline. And bring all the way here. Now we're going to blend this, the source in our destination and make it in the mode adds. See how our heart is glowing now? It's because it's blurred and in the blending mode adds. Uh, instead of just adding the heart into the scene render pass, we can create another tag here and add 3D objects. Objects. And I'll change here for objects dot sub tree. And now all of our objects are glowing beautifully. I love it so, so much. It looks so much better now. Now that everything uh, looks glued together, let's add some other assets like uh, a LUT, a color LUT. Maybe in this one, we can add the cream tone. I think it looks beautiful. Where is it? Where is? It's here. Here we can add the texture and the output. It's look, it looks very moded. So I need something more colorful. Uh, let me find another one. Maybe the Ludwig. Yes, I love this one. And I'm going to add another shader. 
that is the uh, maybe the the adjust colors it's very simple and does a lot of stuff here we can change the brightness the contrasts the who the saturation and the lightness and even invert the image now let's add some color while starting another effect let's add another pose transition sorry i forgot about the animation transition from zero to one uh from minus one to zero actually in circular in and out Maybe it's two seconds. Everything is more colorful with candies. So this is all. Uh, so this was our effect for this workshop. I hope you enjoyed it. I had lots of fun and also learning something new today, even if you're are a more experienced creator and I hope you had fun and most important I hope to see your effect posted on your Instagram please tag me I will be super happy to see what you create with this and I'm av available and I am available if you want to ask me something if you were stuck in a part of this workshop and also I'll be here uh, talking to you and asking, uh, answering questions. And I want to see if you create something with this. So thank you for watching and I can't wait to see you in the next workshops. Thank you.